I call attention to one of the recent books by uh, a theologian uh, teaching in Minnesota, Fagioli, <coughs> Massimo Fagioli, who uh, wrote a book called Vatican II, The Battle for Meaning. Um, in the vision of Pope Benedict XVI, uh, the proper interpretation is not a battle. It is uh, an understanding that see, sees how the continuity of the tradition of the church is the determining aspect of how the documents of the Second Vatican Council should be uh, should be uh, interpreted. I uh, I believe that uh, his. Uh, invitation to celebrate this year as a year of faith, to mark the 50th anniversary of the Council, by the way, also the 20th anniversary of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, both of which have the October 11th uh, date as their, uh, their starting point. Uh, Pope Benedict, uh, in this address to the Curia, asked the question, why has the implementation of the Council in various parts of the church thus far been so difficult. And in his response, I call this to your attention for those who might like to do a little more reading and research uh, about it. He says it depends on interpreting the council correctly, that is, through its proper hermeneutic. He says this, the, problem, the problems in its implementation arose from the fact the two contrary hermeneutics came face to face and quarreled with each other. One caused confusion. The other, silently but more visibly, bore and is bearing fruit. On the one hand, he said, there is an interpretation that he either calls it a hermeneutic of discontinuity and rupture. That is to say, it's a hermeneutic or an interpretation that ruptures the continuity of the tradition that comes down from the apostles. Uh, on the other, he said, there is the hermeneutic of reform and renewal in the continuity of the church that the Lord has given to us. It's the one church that continues to proclaim a, a, a single gospel, a gospel that reflects the mind and the revelation of God himself given to us in Jesus Christ. Um, I'd like to offer my example. These are not the Pope's example. I want to offer an example of the hermeneutic of discontinuity and rupture. And then an example, these are single examples, one could, could take uh, so many different ones. But here's the example I will give for the hermeneutic of discontinuity. About four years ago, the Dominican province, the province of Dominican priests in the Netherlands, Holland, sent a letter to every parish in the country on their own initiative, uh, outlining their position on how to meet the sh shortage of priests that can prevent people from having mass offered in their own parish church every Sunday. They proposed such things as the ordination of women and of married men, but they also advanced the theory that in the absence of an ordained priest, the worshiping assembly could designate its own presider, who could lead them in a valid Eucharist. It doesn't take an expert in theology, I, I hope uh, that most of us have uh, our catechetical knowledge would allow us to recognize that uh, such a view is contrary, is not in continuity with the tradition of the church, that only a validly ordained priest in the sacrament of the sacrament of holy orders can celebrate the valid Eucharist. Here's an example of the confusion caused by an attempted interpretation of church doctrine that is in discontinuity, even rupture, with the tradition of the church. I complete the example by uh, indicating to you that in order to repair the scandal that was caused by this, the Master General of the Dominican Order required the provincial to 
send to all of the same parishes an article which he had prepared by the Dominican theologian, Father Le Grand, uh, to present the correct Catholic doctrine on each of the points raised by his, his Dutch converts. On the other hand, uh, let me give you an example of reform and renewal in continuity. That's uh, my example. I, I would here recite the Apostolic Constitution. I use the Latin title, Anglicanorum Changibus. It's uh, the Apostolic Constitution which provided for Anglicans who uh, hold the Catholic faith uh, to enter into <coughs> full unity with the Catholic Church, yet keeping some of their Anglican liturgical traditions and uh, spiritual uh, uh, tes testament. Um, since the ecumenical quest for church unity was one of the major themes of the Council, uh, this uh, response of Pope Benedict to many requests from Anglicans, mostly from what is called the Anglo-Catholic tradition, to be allowed to enter into full communion with the Catholic Church while retaining some of the Anglican traditions. The word is used with a small t, but it refers to these uh, liturgical traditions such as marriage and funeral rituals, uh, certain English language prayers, their structures of lay participation, practices of the spiritual life. These groups are composed of persons who already accept the Catholic faith. In their petitions, they proposed the Catechism of the Catholic Church as the expression of the faith that they already share with Catholics. In making a disposition for the establishment of ordinaries for these former Anglicans, clergy and faithful, the Holy Father reaffirmed the venerable traditions of Anglican patrimony as important to preserve and as compatible with the variety of ritual and liturgical traditions which exist even in the Latin Rite, not to mention the many Eastern Rites in union with the Holy Father of the Pope. I believe that this uh, offered a concrete witness on the part of the Holy Father that can help overcome fears that have been expressed in some of the ecumenical dialogues that unity of faith might exclude the diversity of expression of an enculturated faith. The examples that Pope Benedict himself alluded to in his 2005 discourse seem to me to merit uh, continued thorough study and discussion. And I uh, certainly have uh, taken uh, my, expressed my desire that our Catholic universities and theological faculties continue this research and discussion. Such uh, study it seems to me to be necessary to fulfill one of the goals of the Council. That is, as the Pope said, the Council had to determine in a new way the relationship between the church and the modern era. Uh, in citing examples of this, of the tensions in this relationship, he cites for the historical case regarding Galileo, and the, whether the, uh, the sun moves around the earth or the earth moves around the sun, and its relationship to, uh, to, the, uh, to the biblical uh, he cites the, uh, the conflict between church and state stemming from the French Revolution, which was paramount in, in European countries toward the end of the 18th century. Uh, he cites the uh, clash of tension between the Church of Spain and uh, a, uh, the natural sciences as they developed. Uh, Questions, for example, of evolution and uh, various questions of whether our knowledge is limited to the scientific sphere or whether faith gives us a new a dimension about the meaning of human, uh, our human existence and its purpose. These uh, issues and there are others that 